Well, agents started leaving the National Association of Realtors. In this video, I wanted to break down a little bit of the aftermath of the NAR settlement in the Schitzer Burner case and how this affects agents moving forward because I know that a lot of agents are not happy whatsoever with this move and I definitely uh, preferred it the way it was. Yes, we will all need to adjust and move forward and I think there are aspects of transparency that we could argue uh, was positive from the settlement and also the fact that this kind of ends a lot of the liability and we don't have this cloud looming over us of uncertainty. So with that being said, did NAR do a good job of protecting us agents who have every year without fail paid our dues, paid our membership dues, and have been uh, affiliated with NAR? Did NAR do a good job? Because as an association, they're here to protect us realtors. So did they do a good job or did they sell out? And I wanted to share kind of both viewpoints about this. And I did also want to shed some light on whether we're going to see agents leave uh, National Association of Realtors and just go independent and uh, non-affiliated with uh, NAR. So there's a lot to break down and this is all basically my own opinion. I don't know what's actually going to happen or how things are going to transpire, but we all know what the settlement accomplished and the major takeaways are uh, on the positive side is there's not going to be any more liability for most parties um, that were associated with this. So most agencies are going to be protected from any further liability relating to this case and future cases like it. So the whole matter of buyer agency compensation, it seems like there's going to be an end to those lawsuits for most of the brokerages that are involved. Now, the big thing that came out of it are the proposed practice changes that should be going into effect mid-July as of now. And the major two changes there that completely flip our industry on its back is that number one, there is no more offer of compensation that is going to be made on the MLS. It will have to be negotiated off platform if it exists between the agents and the consumer. The second rule change is that you will need to have a signed agreement from a buyer prior to showing them any houses at all. So this radically transforms our industry because it was always that you had a choice whether you wanted to have an agreement signed or not. You could just take a buyer out and if you find them the home they like, then you were entitled to that compensation that was listed on the MLS. That compensation was always negotiable. There was never a standard or fixed price that an owner had to pay out. But uh, with all the recent litigations, this is how it, we are going to move forward. And this is going to be the new normal when it comes to the real estate industry. So now as agents, do we think that NAR sold us out or did they have their back? Once again, we do need to give them credit for finally putting an end to this. But what they agreed to, I'm not too thrilled about it. And I know a lot of agents aren't thrilled about it either. It's radically transforming 50% of the business. There's a list side and there's a buy side. So therefore, that's why they could see up to 50% of the agents really struggling to make it through this industry and maybe even drop out as agents altogether, let alone leaving NAR. So as an association, could they have negotiated something that was better to us as the agents? I think if there was a better solution out there, then I would like to believe that they have exhausted all better options before uh, settling on what they settled. But obviously what they settled on was a, is going to be a huge challenge for agents and their livelihoods. Even me in my own career, that's where a lot of my business came from. It came from the brokering of deals where I got buyer leads from platforms like Zillow Premier Agent and I would just work with them and I would know that if I sell those buyers a home, that I earned the commission that was uh, represented in the MLS. So maybe they didn't really have another option, but at the end of the day, what they chose to settle on really makes things challenging for real estate professionals. And then when you consider that already 50% of agents didn't even sell a house in 2023 or maybe sold one house or less. I forget what the statistic is, but the reality of it is, especially in these times, agents were having such a hard time as it was that so many agents were doing under one to two deals a year. So now how are they going to move forward and do more deals when it becomes so much harder to even do a deal? Now 50% of the business has completely changed and maybe will slowly even become more 
more obsolete. I don't want to say that, but you never really know. I definitely foresee a lot more single agent transactions. Where does that leave the agent? And where does that leave the agent's loyalty to National Association of Realtors? Are we going to start seeing big agencies and big franchises disconnect from NAR? I think that what we need to keep in mind is that the biggest asset that the National Association of Realtors provided for agents was the MLS. Yes, we also had a code of ethics that we needed to adhere to, and they would get involved if anything was happening, you know, within your local association that you had a problem with. But aside from that, I think the biggest value that they always provided was access to the MLS, where we could syndicate our listings to, and they go out everywhere, and we can communicate broker to broker about the transaction, and most importantly be able to earn a commission from that transaction that is posted on the MLS. So now, if they take away the compensation, if they remove the compensation from the MLS, that's most of the value that was provided from that MLS in the first place. Yes, there is still a value in sharing information agent to agent and contact info and how to get in touch and how to submit an offer. That's still very valuable for the MLS, but I believe having access to that MLS and being eligible for a compensation if you brought a willing, able, and ready buyer to a closing table, then that's where I would say at least half of the value of the MLS is associated to that commission that you get paid at the end of a deal. So if you get rid of that, then the MLS becomes less valuable. I don't think there's anyone that can really question that. So now that we consider that the MLS, which makes up at least 50% of the value that NAR provides, and that was the main reason why a lot of agents would work with a NAR affiliated brokerage or brokerages would elect to be affiliated with NAR. Now you're taking what's most valuable about NAR and you're cutting the value of that pretty much in half or more than half, depending on how you look at it. If you combine that with the fact that maybe even the NAR dues are going to go up in the future in relation to the $418 million settlement that they need to pay over the next four years, they've already committed that the 2024 dues would remain unchanged. But what happens after 2024? If 2025 and 2026 comes along, and then they expect agents to pay double the money for half the value, and now it becomes twice as hard to make an income because of all the changes that this association agreed to, then at what point do we reach that fine line where agents say, listen, I don't get the value from this association anymore to justify this fee that I'm paying them? Could we see a lot of agents leaving NAR? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I plan to still be affiliated with it. I see a value in the MLS. Already 25% of licensed agents are not affiliated with the National Association of Realtors. Um, When you consider the fact that I expect anywhere from 30 to 50% of all real estate agents to probably be out of the business by the next two years, then agents are going to be non-affiliated with with NAR anyways because they won't even be agents anymore. So they'll definitely lose a lot of members just because they can't keep up. They can't do the few deals that were that they were doing that made the whole thing worth it. And we're definitely going to see them lose a lot of agents just for the fact that they're not going to be agents altogether. They're not going to be renewing their real estate license. So the other side of this is that Honestly, you and I and all the other agents, we don't know exactly how that settlement broke down and if that was the best course for them to take. It may very well have been. I mean, that's what they're that's what they're saying, that this was the only course of action that they could have taken that ends this. And to that, I can kind of understand. Maybe it's just one of those situations where there wasn't an easy answer for it. 
Um, like I said before, I like to believe that they exhausted every other option before reaching this settlement, but there's just so much that the regular person doesn't know about how negotiations around the settlement really broke down. Um, this definitely makes it very hard for agents, and I'm really saddened about the fact that we're going to lose so many agents in the marketplace, but this now is the new normal unless we hear anything otherwise. So we're going to have to gear up and adapt as agents to kick butt in this new way of doing business. So I actually made another video that shows you exactly how you can use this to your advantage and survive this as an agent and come out stronger than ever. So you want to watch this video over here for that full breakdown. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.